everyone, Nick here. Welcome to episode two of Geared Up. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the BMW S1, the 2016 BMW S1000 RR. I wanted to get my hands on the new one. I'm hoping that is still a possibility sometime in the future, but I wanted to do the 2016 version first because I already had it and I wanna compare the two for when I get a hand on, or for when I get my hands on the new one. But today we're gonna to meet up with Tyler. You guys saw him in the last episode for episode one with the AGV Sport Modular. Today he's gonna to be reviewing his friend's BMW S1000RR. Let's go ahead and meet up with him and get this started. When everybody thinks they know ya And y'all don't even know I don't ya And now I'm ready taking over Cause every day I'm getting closer Just look at everything I'll show ya So the Beamer is has a very similar seating position to my Cowie, which is awesome for taller people because it gives a place for my knees to go and just naturally sitting on it, ergonomically, it feels like it's meant for someone of my size. Uh, for example, I get on R1, it's ear cramped. You gotta already gotta put a tank extension on it. You gotta pull the bars out. You gotta push the foot pegs down. But as far as the, the stock setup on the S1000RR, it's uh, remarkably comfortable for a taller person like myself, 6'1". I'm not like remarkably tall, but above average. So very comfortable, very comfortable indeed. Ah, Corey, what's up dude? Uh, glad you asked. Um, it's amazing. It's one of my favorite bikes when it comes to that, simply because it's so torquey. All my power is really high. Like, you know, nine and up is really where the meat of the power band is. On this thing, half throttle, it, four or five K, it's just coming right up, just floaters. So definitely a machine of a wheelie bike. The bike just right there in your hand. There's no questions about it. It's got power all the way through the power band. So it's a wheelie machine. It's a unicycle for sure. Um, so in regards to the electronics, specifically in the suspension area, it's, it's great. It really is um, simply because it gives you a user interface that's digital. Typically on sport bikes, you're having manual clickers and people are just intimidated by it. They don't know what equates to what. So what does one click do? Um, and a digital interface in the digital world that we live in, it's kind of like playing with your iPhone and changing the settings. Oh, what'd this do? Okay, this changed that. And it feels a little bit less uh, problematic. So if you do want to play around with the settings, one, you can do it on the fly. Two, you get instant response when you do adjust it. So you can, okay, this did that, uh, no, I don't like that. Or this did that, oh, that feels great, let's try this now. So there's a much more user-friendly interface when it comes to adjusting your suspension, and it's less intimidating for newer riders simply because it's a digital interface and not physical, you don't need any tools um, except for the preload, but other than that, it's extremely user-friendly. So it definitely gets a thumbs up for me. Um, I've used it, I love it. I'm able to change depending on which road I'm on. Uh, if a certain section gets bumpy, I can click down rebound, I can click up compression, I could do whatever I need to do, which I would normally do without leaving the bike or stopping my ride. So I really think that's a, a strong point when it comes to the, the suspension area. So today I actually experienced experienced the traction control for the first time where I was like, okay, that was traction control. Um, I've been riding the bike for a couple weeks. I probably had 250 miles on it, um, but more so I haven't been really doing lean angle. I've just really been commuting back and forth, and upright, upright, upright. I've taken it in the canyons a few times just to kind of get the feel for it, but nothing how I normally ride. Um, so I definitely today got to feel what it feels like with the traction control. If I didn't think about it, I wouldn't have known it was on, one. And two, if I didn't have the display on my dash that actually shows you how intrusive the traction control is, I wouldn't have really known it went on. So I'm not gonna lie to you, I wouldn't have known it hit unless I looked at the dash and I thought back to the feeling it had. That's the only way I could attribute it that it was the traction control, because I looked back on the dash, it's like, okay, I was at lean angle, I was chopping it. Um, so it's, you won't even feel it. It's, 
super, super smooth. It's not gonna cut out, it's not gonna buck you, it's not gonna do any of that stuff. And that's uh, not in slick mode, by the way. That's just with the race mode on Pirelli Super Courses. The daily commuter, the S1000RR, specifically the 16 year, it's a great bike. I only prefer to ride leader bikes on a commute. I know some people think it's ridiculous. I just don't like to be in high RPMs. I just need the torque, I wanna go. I don't wanna be 8,000 RPM just to go buy a car that, you know, needed to go buy. So it's extremely user friendly and back to the suspension aspect. I just click the compression down a little bit, the front and the rear, and it's, it's like you're gliding. So I have a race bike when I need it and then I have a commuter when I need it. So it's kind of the best of both worlds in a sense when it comes to the new bikes that you're able to make all these adjustments on the fly whenever you need to. So it's a great commuter bike, very user friendly. It's not overheating, it's not bucking you, and you know, it, it's very, very user friendly. All right guys, that wraps up episode two of Geared Up. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you, Tyler, for always helping and being so detailed with your reviews. Make sure you guys check him out on YouTube as well. He's gonna be coming out with a lot of his own content. So let's help him out. Head to the link in the description, subscribe to his channel. Leave a comment down below for what you'd like to see reviewed next for episode three of Geared Up. Other than that guys, that's it for today's video. See you in the next one. Peace.